Hello, my name is Mark Perriello. I'm the president at the Kauai Chamber of Commerce. We're here today with Milo Spint, who is running for county council here on Kauai. Um, thank you for being with us here today. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, so we are going to just jump right into these questions. And the first one is softball. Tell us about yourself and why you're running for office. Well, my name is Milo Spent. I was uh, born here in Kauai. I was born in Luai Valley, and I currently reside in Kalaheo. I'm married to a nurse. Uh, my wife's name is Amy Spent, and we have two kids. Uh, my son is 12 years old. His name is Kai, and my daughter, his name is Naya, and she's nine years old. Um, I'm running for office because I really want to protect our Kauai lifestyle so that we can have it there for our children and for future generations. Because I think that whether or not you were born here or if you moved here last year, we're all on Kauai because we love the lifestyle that Kauai offers. And I think what I've been hearing out in the public is that a lot of people are concerned that cost of housing, traffic, cesspools, our environmental issues are all starting to cause our Kauai lifestyle to slip away. And those expenses, I'm really concerned that my children, after they go off to college, won't be able to afford to move home. All right. Um, thank you, Milo. So we have just a few questions today. Um, but the first set of questions really deal with the business climate here on the island. Hawaii is traditionally ranked as one of the worst places to do business in the United States. Um, and Kauai is no exception to that. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you could do on the county council to help make it easier to open and own and operate a business here on Kauai? Well, I think part of that, um, and I, let me preface this by saying that I've been in real estate for 17 years, and most people uh, don't always understand that as a, as a real estate agent, you are your own business. You're responsible for advertising, marketing. I have to pay uh, Social Security and FICA, my own insurance, uh, and things like that. So I've been a small business person for 17 years, and um, I've practiced real estate both in Nevada and Washington and here in Hawaii. And there are certainly additional challenges, taxes, licensing, um, a lot of fees. And I think that if we can, as a government, recognize that small businesses are the economic engine of our community and really work on ways to facilitate more small business, I think that's the best thing that the council can do and try and streamline the process as much as possible. All right, great. Um, thank you. So sticking with the business um, theme here, a lot of chamber members report that they have difficulty hiring and retaining employees here because of the housing crisis. Um, you know, they might be able to find someone who's willing to take the job with their establishment, but the, this person can't necessarily find a place to rent, a home to buy, um, and so people are really having a hard time staffing up to the levels that they need to in order to support their businesses. Um, how can you address the housing crisis on the county council? Well, uh, that's a great question. And I'm going to start with a little story about my own personal background. Uh, Twelve years ago, uh, my wife and I were living in Reno, Nevada, and we were pregnant with our son. And we had no interest at the time in moving home to Kauai. But when we got pregnant, we all of a sudden thought, you know, there's only one place in the world we really want to raise our children, and it's back here on Kauai. And as a small business person, I had built up a good little business, and I felt like, oh, I can finally afford to move home. But the challenge was, this was in 2006, and the median home sales price in 2006 was in the mid 700,000, so it was around 740, $750,000 for a three bedroom, two bathroom, a, lot, a thousand square foot home on Kauai. And uh, I was a bit younger than I am now. I was, uh, I was, in, I was 29 years old and I couldn't afford as a, as a man just starting off with his family to spend three quarters of a million dollars on a house. So this is a, something that I recognize as a very personal challenge. I understand the business challenge behind it as well. 
But 12 years ago, I encountered this issue, and I really thought, you know, if I can't afford to move home, there's got to be kids all over the place who can't afford to move home as well. And so I started investing a lot of time into learning about affordable housing and affordable housing development. And over the last 12 years, I've volunteered on uh, boards and committees, and I'm currently the vice chair, or I'm sorry, I was just nominated as the chairperson of the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation, which is a state board under the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. And we manage, uh, we have about a billion dollars in state funds that we manage, and we also manage some federal funding programs like the Low Income Housing Tax Credit and some other programs that help develop affordable housing throughout the state. And so I would, con I consider myself to be an expert on affordable housing, and I think we really need to work on infrastructure projects, the state and the county working together to develop infrastructure necessary so we can build more affordable housing to address not only our housing costs for employers, but for kids who want to move home. All right, great, thank you. So let's talk about the minimum wage now. So a lot of people would argue that increasing the minimum wage would spur economic growth um, and job growth. And another set of people might say that increasing the minimum wage will actually lead to businesses having to lay people off um, because they can't afford it, um, and ultimately leading to increased poverty. What do you think the impact is of an increased minimum wage to $15 an hour? So I think that in some areas, um, the one that comes to mind is San Francisco, uh, where cost of living in the city itself is very high, and they have a very high minimum wage you can see some uh, economic benefit from that. But we live in a somewhat more closed business environment in that you can't live in Oakland and commute to Kauai. You know, we don't have a commuter society. So if we raise our minimum wage on Kauai to $15 an hour, um, it's going to raise the cost of everything here. And that increase, I think, will see a, a short-term economic benefit but then all the rest of it, uh, all the rest of the uh, economic factors that go into it, the cost of food will go up uh, because th those are the minimum wage jobs. Uh, a cheeseburger at McDonald's will have to go up in expense. Uh, we can also look at things like when we increase minimum wage, and this has happened historically with farming and all kinds of other industries, technology starts to take over. People look for, uh, business owners look for ways to become more efficient with their expenses. And, and at some point, it becomes more efficient to invest in technology than it does to invest in an individual. So I think there could be some short-term economic benefit, but I think in the long term, it's not the answer. I think we, need to do, we do need to increase wages, but we need to be very careful how we do that uh, with inflation in a very small ecosystem. So I don't, I'm not a big proponent of that. Um, there's some other factors involved with our union contracts because we have so many union contracts that if we raise uh, the weight of, rate of minimum wage at McDonald's to $15 an hour, what do we do about the park caretakers who were getting $15 an hour and now they're looking like they're on parity with the McDonald's workers? Um, and that, So that'll have an effect on uh, government expense as well. All right, thank you. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the county budget. Mm -hmm. What do you think the county is spending too much on, and what do you think the county is not spending enough on? I'm going to start with the not spending enough on um, our infrastructure. Our infrastructure has not increased much over the past, I'm, I'm 41 years old, and the infrastructure here on Kauai has not increased very much. We, knew, we do now have four lanes on Kamuali'i Highway here coming into Lihui. But when we look at capacity increasing uh, for infrastructure on roadways, there really hasn't been a lot of capacity increases. The other area in infrastructure that we haven't seen much increase in is our sewer systems. And by the year 2050, we all have to convert off of cesspools. So this is a huge concern. If our government isn't putting money into our infrastructure projects, especially things like sewer, because sewer is not only going to hit us all in the pocketbook when we have to convert from septic systems uh, into, uh, or from cesspools into septic systems, but it also has a direct impact on our environment. And here on Kauai, 
our environment is our economy. People come here for our wonderful environment. And if we continue to pollute our environment, then uh, people are going to stop coming here. Um, where do we spend too much money? You know, I do think that over the last three councils, they have done a good job of cutting a lot of unnecessary fluff in the budget. Um, there are some positions in the county that uh, are funded but not being staffed. Um, I would like to take a look at those to see if they are necessary positions or if we have been able to function well without those positions. You know, is there a deficit because we're not hiring those people or are those positions that we d no longer need? All right, great. So in 2017, visitor spending on Kauai increased 9.6% to $1.8 billion from $1.6 billion in 2016. And most indicators point to future growth. The island has benefited from the taxes generated, the jobs provided, as well as the give back that the visitor industry gives through the charity walk and other special events. But we also have an aging infrastructure, right? There's overcrowding at the popular destinations on the island. And many businesses are really struggling to keep pace with the demand for their products and services. How can you use the power of your office on the county council to address the future growth in tourism that's projected? Oh, there was a really great presentation done by, uh, uh, I think she was the uh, executive director of the Icelandic Visitor Bureau that was done earlier this year. And she talked about how when Iceland pursued a tourism economy, how they recognized the impact that it would have on their environment and then planned for how to, uh, how to keep the tourists in balance with their environment. And there are some really great ideas that came out of what they accomplished that I think we could use here on Kauai because there's a lot of similarities between uh, uh, Iceland, believe it or not, and, and Kauai. And I think one of the first things is the pledge, the environmental pledge that, that when tourists come here, they are going to be aware of the unique lifestyle and culture and environment that we have here on Kauai. And a pledge doesn't commit them to anything, but it makes them aware. And we can then begin with education. I think in addition to that, once we start, if we get buy-in from uh, the travel industry into that, we can work with our partners in the hotel and travel industry to work on things like shuttle buses uh, to and from the airport, which when we go to Vegas or other places, there's lots of, lots of shuttles. Here on Kauai, you're really required to rent a car. And I think that if we can lower those impacts by getting the hotels to commit to shuttles and then looking at things like regional shuttle buses, uh, Waikiki has the Waikiki trolley system that runs in a loop through Waikiki and you can buy a day pass. And with that day pass, you can get anywhere from Ala Moana all the way down through Waikiki. And it really allows tourists to visit Oahu and Waikiki without needing to rent a car and adding to congestion. So those are two ideas. And then I think that if we work with the, um, the tour industry business, we can work on really promoting the more ecological, uh, ecologically friendly tours and um, events that we have on the island and really work on promoting that to lower the impact of our tourists as they come out here to enjoy what we all enjoy. All right. Great. Um, thank you, Milo. Um, so last question. Is there anything else you would like to share with the viewers today? Well, I do want to thank you, Mark, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you guys do a wonderful job here in the community promoting our local businesses. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to come down and, and have a chance to talk with you about why I'm running for county council. Um, you know, I really do feel like there's some really wonderful candidates that are running for council and that there are some wonderful candidates who are very concerned about maintaining the lifestyle that I grew up with, that you, know, you moved here to enjoy, and that finding that balance between business and lifestyle and tourism that we can find that balance if we all work together. And so I'm really excited about that. And I'd like to thank you again. All right, awesome. Um, thank you for your time today. Um, we are here with Milo Spint, who is running for County Council here on Kauai. Uh, thank you for joining us.